Expo Canada, and very excited to be here with Chef Jonathan Chung from Appetite for Books. Uh, Jonathan, why don't you start just explaining to people what we mean by cooking with color? Um, well, I'm really big on uh, 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 using a lot of colors in my in my dishes. You know, the great thing about this time of year is that the 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 farmers markets are full of really colorful vegetables that that really paint a picture on your plate and on the table. Uh, you eat with your eyes first, right, Brian? So, uh, yeah. so I like to really accentuate that and, and, and throw as many colors, make everything pop, make everything nice and bright. Try some different things. Absolutely, that are only absolutely. Here. So uh, uh, it's really great that, that Breville put out the, the Damps in Blue uh, uh, colored appliances. It goes really great with, uh, with our whole trend of, of, of cooking uh, with lots of colors on the plate. So what we have for you today, we've got four things, right? What are the four things we're going to do? We got Oh, we've got some really great things we're going to start off with uh, tonight. We've got, we're going to just do some really simple roasted vegetables, which okay. is a, probably the simplest way of, of putting a lot of color onto a plate. Right. Um, and, and again, it's a, uh, roasted vegetables are kind of like a blank canvas. You can do a lot of different things with it and serve a lot of different things with them. So we're going to uh, uh, do some really basic, uh, simple roasted vegetables and then we're going to do a sauce to go with it. Okay. Not only is a so not only is the sauce will it, will it go with the roasted vegetables? It'll go with with meats, fish, uh, uh, all types of vegetables um, roasted or not roasted. Got so it. it's a really versatile sauce, really perfect for uh, uh, for someone who has no idea. You can really just throw everything in and Okay, and, and so we got it. we got the roasted veggies, the sauce and Yeah, then we have a, so it, it's a romesco sauce that we're going to make uh, uh, with a little bit of smoked paprika, so that's going to be great. Um, we're going to do a soup Okay. Uh, we're going to do a cauliflower soup, which is obviously pretty white, not, not very colorful, but what really is going to make it uh, colorful are, is the garnishes that's going to go with it. Okay. Okay. So we're going to do uh, a, pure, a, a roasted cauliflower soup that we're going to puree. Awesome. And then we're going to do uh, uh, some peas and feta, some almonds, a little bit of mint, some uh, fresh lemon Amazing. to go on top of that. And then and we got to finish with dessert? Yeah, finish with dessert. We're going to do a plum frangipan tart, which I love frangipan. It's perfect for this time of year. Uh, it's like an almond custard kind of filling that we're going to put into a, a, a super simple tart shell awesome. uh, that we'll talk about really nice and easy. Perfect. Perfect. So guys, a little more context on Jonathan and Appetite for Books. So we're actually in Montreal in Westmount. Uh, at a little cookbook store called Appetite for Books, which is a place where Jonathan curates a huge but always changing assortment of recipe books from all over the world, which is neat in itself. But where we are right now is in the back of the shop. He has a full kitchen where he does cooking classes three, four times a week where they dive into the recipes even deeper, cooking techniques and private events, knife sharpening skills. So Hudson's Bay and Breville are really excited to share Jonathan with a wider uh, <laughs> audience on this Facebook Live. So that's, that's what we're going to do. Uh, we're doing this, Jonathan mentioned Dams in Blue. So the idea of cooking with color was inspired by the launch of our Dams in Blue line, uh, Breville's Dams in Blue line at Hudson's Bay. So that's espresso machines, ovens, toasters, uh, blenders, juicers, all in this Dams in Blue. Uh, and it's a whole bunch of small kitchen appliances, which is a really, really hot color right now in homes and linens and all different architectural points of view. So we like it because it's a nice way to add a punch of color to the kitchen without a giant uh, you know, renovation that would often come from uh, adding a color to the kitchen. So that's a little bit of the inspiration. Uh, now, a few quick housekeeping points before we dive into it. Uh, number one, obviously, just like you, we're very COVID aware, following all uh, public health guidelines, Jonathan and I will stay a healthy distance apart. And actually, after the introduction, I'll probably move off uh, to the side and the focus will go where it belongs on Jonathan and the cooking. So that's number one. Number two, Jonathan's classes are normally how long? Two? Uh, three? Yeah, about two and a half, three hours. <laughs> We've got 40 minutes and we really <laughs> want to keep you for 40. So you don't worry about scribbling down recipes. Jonathan has been kind enough to share his recipes with us. And then Hudson's Bay and Rebel want to share them with you. So. On the, on the profile, I believe there's a link on the Facebook page, as well as uh, on the Hudson's Bay Pinterest page. You'll get all the recipes, which is amazing. Uh, what we're going to try to do is focus on the tricky parts and use the magic of TV, the internet, to maybe uh, short circuit different parts. Uh, last thing, if you have questions, please ask them in the comments. We have people from Breville and Hudson's Bay answering, so you'll get answers right away. And then at the end, we'll make sure we, uh, we, we put a few to, uh, to the chef, Jonathan. But anyway, we're looking forward to it. We've got a big thing, so let's get started with some 
roasted veggies. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm a huge fan. Thanks, Brian. Uh, I'm a huge fan. I just realized I'm wearing a Dampson blue shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. Um, all right, guys. So uh, this is what's going to happen. I've got some really great vegetables here that we're gonna we're gonna start uh, roasting, and and I th this is just kind of like play around with it, do what's in season. Uh, I've got these beautiful carrots right now, and I'm gonna roast them whole in whole pieces. Uh, um, just like this. And then I've also got a little bit of uh, parsnips that I, I peeled and, and, and just split them right down the middle. I like to leave them nice and big uh, to keep them, you know, really nice and meaty and something to bite into. And you just picked those up at the market, right? Yeah, we just went to Jantala Market uh, uh, today and picked up some really great uh, uh, fresh vegetables. So um, this is what's going to happen. I want to take our vegetables and we're going to dump, we're going to start off by dumping them into a, a, a big bowl. So in like so, and I like to seed, I like to flavor it with some herbs. So I've got some fresh thyme. And what we'll do is we'll just simply throw it in. We're going to get uh, a sprig or two of, of fresh rosemary. This is the time carrots and parsnips really, really go well with uh, heady herbs like that. Um, I want to add in a touch of garlic in here. So let's take uh, a big fat clove of garlic. The Give garlic right now, the Quebec garlic is amazing too that's available. It is, it is. It's, look how fat and juicy this, this garlic clove is. I'm going to keep it, I'm going to keep it whole. Uh, uh, just lightly smashed, and I'm going to keep it whole, and I'm just going to add it directly into the bowl like so. Now, with the herbs, you put them right in there like that? Exactly, exactly. I, I want to keep them in nice big pieces. Alternately, what you could do, uh, Brian, is you could strip, you could strip the, the stems okay. and, and with, of the leaves and just toss it in. But I also I like to roast it with the stems because the stems actually have a lot of flavor. And also less work, so it sounds good. <laughs> Ultimately, we're all lazy and we want it done as soon as possible. So that's the best way to do it. Just throw the whole stem in there. Uh, I'm going to drizzle with, a, with uh, some extra virgin olive oil to coat really nice and lightly. We're going to season it. Of course, seasoning is very important. Some sea salt I have uh, and a few cracks of pepper, just like so. What we'll do is do a quick toss, get everything nicely coated. And what I want to do is lay this onto a baking sheet. I think the best way to do this would be, I like to use a little bit of parchment paper and I'm gonna get just a, a baking sheet and really simple, what we're gonna do is just lay it onto the, the baking sheet and ideally we don't wanna clump it, uh, like pile it up too much. You wanna have pretty much a single layer and I'm gonna pop that in the oven. Now, when it comes to temperature, uh, of, of roasting vegetables, I'm in the camp of roasting it at an extremely high temperature. Um, so that means 450 degrees or 475 degrees. If you have convection, do it on convection. The reason I do that is because I want to give those carrots or whatever vegetables I'm roasting a really deep like caramelization without overcooking. A lot of times if you roast it too low, it takes a long time to get the color. Okay. Uh, so I want to still have, I want them to have still a little bit of crispness. Um, and how long do we roast it for? Well, if you're roasting at 450 or 475 on convection, I'm only roasting it until it has a little bit of color. So nice caramelization around. Uh, at that time, they are going to be cooked. And I was just mentioning to Brian a little bit earlier, you're better off to have them slightly underdone than overdone. Because I want to have, I, I want to have a little bit of crispness to it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to pop this in the oven at 475 degrees, and we're going to we're going to pop it into uh, um, uh, our Breville Smart Oven here, uh, and it gets up to a really great 475 degrees, nice and hot. And through the magic of television, I already have some done. <laughs> <laughs> I just say the smart oven air fryer that we're using there in the back. So it's a it's a kitchen countertop oven. Used to be called toaster ovens, but this thing can bake, it can roast, it actually air fries at convection and super convection. So it's a really amazing oven to do a whole bunch of different things. And uh, so you use the roast function at what was the temperature? Yeah, 450 degrees. Uh, the oven gets up to 450 degrees, which is perfect for what we need to do. Uh, and as you can see, our vegetables here, we've got uh, uh, some nice caramelization around the corners. Even on these parsnips at the tips, they're nice and crispy. And, uh, and what's uh, the flavors that you get roasting versus you know other ways? Oh, of well, there's the smokiness. There's this kind of meatiness that you're going to get from it. As 
adds a little depth of flavor, uh, especially if you season it well. Uh, uh, but these are great on their own. They're great to toss into uh, uh, salads. And uh, uh, we're going to do something with uh, another roasted vegetable uh, next, which we, we're going to make it into a soup. But in the roasted, you, I noticed you put them all together. So you don't do different individual because the onions cook faster. You're just... That's a great question, Brian. So uh, I, I'm, if you cut everything in the same, around the same size, okay. it'll cook in, a, in about the same amount of time. Especially these carrots and parsnips. They're, are, they're root vegetables. So okay. they have a similar... Uh, a, a very, uh, they're very similar in the way that they cook. So they're going to cook in about the same amount of time uh, uh, as each other. So and all that is was oil and salt, sea salt at the beginning, and, and you'd serve them like that? Correct. Uh, we've got our olive oil, our salt and pepper, and our herbs, and, and uh, uh, our garlic. And we're going to serve them like that uh, with, with a little bit of romesco sauce. We're going to make some romesco sauce. So uh, really, really simple. This is an, another simple dish. Let me uh, 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 get started on the romesco. So if you don't know what romesco is, it's a really kind of rich roasted vegetable sauce uh, with nuts. Could be almonds, it could be hazelnuts. Uh, uh, in this case, we've got some almonds here. But I'm going to start off by, by cutting some red bell pepper. Oh, that looks delicious. And this is the time of year to be, to be stocking up on your, on your peppers and tomatoes and stuff. So I'm going to take it off the, uh, uh, to cut it away from the, from the core. I'm going to take a nice fat plum tomato, and I'm just going to cut that in half as well. I'm going to take, uh, this is a hot red chili, so we've got a, 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 a pretty hot red chili. Depending on how hot you want it, uh, you could roast the whole thing. Alternately, what you can do is just split it open and seed it. I'm going to actually seed half of it, and we're going to keep the remainder uh, of the seeds in there because I want to I incorporate a little bit of heat into my uh, romesco sauce. Uh, again, we're going to add a nice big fat clove of garlic in there and just give it a good smash to take off the skin. One thing Jonathan always does in his classes, he's always trying to show the, the home chef how they can raise their game and some of the tricks at restaurants. So dips and sauces, that seems to be something a lot of home chefs would just skip. But what does that add to a vegetable, a fish, or a meat when you have Oh, it, it really complements it well, depending on, depending on what you're uh, going to be making. This romesco, like I said earlier, is actually really terrific for, um, uh, for everything. It's a very versatile sauce. So it, uh, uh, I'm a big fan of, of using romesco for anything off the grill, but also roasted vegetables in, in particular. It goes, it goes really well with, uh, with roasted vegetables. So this is pretty much what we've got going on here, guys. And then we're going to do, uh, do something similar in, in the sense that we're going to roast it as well. So again, I'm going to take another uh, baking sheet like this. And I like to use parchment paper. It's a little bit less messy and, and uh, just for cleanup, uh, easier nothing to, to do clean. With cooking. And nothing <laughs> sticks, so it's perfect. So I'm just going to lay this onto the sheet pan like so with our onion, our garlic, our peppers, and our tomato. And notice you didn't take the seeds out of the hot pepper either. Well, I did. I took out half. I'm going okay. to leave the other, uh, the other half on there because I like to have a little bit of heat. And uh, uh, what we'll do really simply is take some extra virgin olive oil. We're going to season generously with some salt. And a so you lid. always season before roasting? Yes. And a little bit of pepper. Now, we don't need a lot of pepper, mainly because we've got the chili in there. So I think the, the, just a couple cracks of fresh pepper is all you need to do. You're going to pop this in the oven. And again, you're going to do it at 450 degrees or 475 degrees. Hotter the better. And again, we're just looking for a little bit of color. Um, I don't think this is romesco unless you have some almonds. So we're going to sprinkle some blanched or uh, 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 just raw almonds on there. And it's, we're all going to, we're going to roast this all together. So we're just going to do it with a little bit of color. And it's going to be really nice. And so again, through the magic of television, I pop this into a 450 degree oven. <laughs> and boom, we've got our romesco. Uh, vegetables here ready to go. The fun thing about that, you think of the smart ovens, that's what you hear a lot at Breville is that you know what, when you're cooking, you might be doing meat or a turkey or a chicken or something in your main oven. So the smart ovens are amazing for doing the sides. It's like you've got the two, uh, two ovens. Exactly. The, the, and the nice thing about romesco is that it's so rich and thick that it's almost like a 
A vegetable on its own. <laughs> okay, so you got the roasted veggies, now what? Yeah, so now we're going to take our Damson Blue Blender here. And uh, I, I, I've been using Breville blenders for a very long time. Uh, uh, and they're, they are terrific. It blends super smooth. And, uh, and it, you know what a lot of comments I get in class about, the, about, about this blender? What? How quiet it is. Yeah, so the, it's called the Super Q. That's one thing that we tried to tackle with our new lines is blending is loud, very loud, obnoxiously loud. So our engineers and designers, our whole line, we've redesigned, decoupled things. So we, we are pretty proud of how quiet compared to other super blenders it is. So this one's the Super Q. Uh, this thing can mill, puree, everything, cold to hot soups that you'll see a little bit later. Uh, and it's, uh, yeah, it's our top of the line blender that Jonathan's using there. Also comes of a, a, a standalone uh, to-go cup, which is great for if you're making smaller quantities. So that's it, you roasted it and everything goes right in the blender. Yeah, in the blender, and then now we're gonna start to season. So uh, uh, Romesco sauce, uh, uh, needs uh, some specific seasonings in here. Number one, obviously, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna put in a good pinch of salt, uh, and then what's really important in romesco is the use of some smoked paprika. So I've got some Spanish uh, smoked paprika, sweet smoked paprika. So I'm gonna put in about a teaspoon of that inside of our romesco, and also very important. I'm gonna add a few splashes of vinegar. So I would say maybe about two tablespoons or so. I would highly, highly recommend that when you make this, treat the vinegar as you would salt and, and, and do it to taste. Because it needs to have a little bit of, it needs to make your, your mouth pucker slightly. So use the vinegar as, as a seasoning. It, mm. it, it'll, uh, uh, instead of having an exact amount, because that, that, that just makes it so that you can put as much tomato or peppers in it as you want. Right. And then you can just season accordingly. So That's really an interesting thing you said, that when, when, as you're doing it after you've done it, you want to pucker, so you really want to feel that, the acid. Yeah, you, need, you definitely need to have a little bit of acid in there. So uh, what we're going to do. Start blending, and I want to get this really nice and smooth. And as this is pureeing, guys, what you're gonna do is take some extra virgin olive oil and start drizzling it in. I'm gonna add in maybe about two or three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. And at the same time, I've got a little bit of bread. So I'm gonna put in a little bit of day old bread that I have here, and that's just gonna help thicken it up, make it a little bit more rich. So I wanna blend that till it's nice and smooth. And the great thing about this blender is it blends it till it's smooth. You can see that vortex, we've designed it with the kinetic bowl, so it's pulling everything down at the center and just thoroughly processing. All right, perfect. So it's funny, you know, it might have been a little tougher to hear you with the blender on, but with it was actually, you were able to hear you because it wasn't. Yeah, th that's the great thing about this blender is I love the fact that it's so quiet. And, you know, in my cooking classes, I have to talk while, while, we're, <laughs> while we're cooking, and, and this is perfect. So I've got this beautiful, smoky uh, romesco sauce here, and uh, I just want to taste it and make sure that we've got um, enough seasoning, uh, salt, uh, vinegar. <laughs> he got it. I got it. Ooh. Brian. Come on. <laughs> I'll taste it. This is it. This is it. So here, this is what's going to happen, guys. Should we plate this first dish? Yeah, let's plate it. Yeah, let's do it. So, so that's the thing. I think it's a nice. I always like the little tips I get from Jonathan. To, so, you know, roasted veggies, good. But adding a amazing sauce or dip that you can whip up pretty simply. I mean, you roasted the veggies, then you blended it. But just takes it to that next level. Exactly, so we've got our beautiful roasted vegetables. We're gonna take a little, I, you know, just an idea of how we, can, how we can plate this, Brian, is we're gonna take a spoonful of our Romesco sauce, just at the base, okay. and we'll just like spread it around. And you don't have to be fancy, you know, you see, these, uh, you see all these fancy schmears on the, <laughs> on the TV in these, in these restaurants, but really I'm just taking a spoonful okay. with my spatula and like <laughs> spreading it on the base, like I'm spreading peanut butter. If you were not, so this is good to look at, if it wasn't done enough, you'd be chunkier, I guess? Correct, correct. And if you did it too much, it would be just too liquidy? Uh, no, it's never gonna, it's never gonna thin out. Um, I, it, it's, you know what, with the nuts and everything in there, it's gonna stay relatively, uh, like there's gonna be tiny little grains and like, but that's kind of the nuttiness. You right. want a little bit of texture in there. So 
This is what we've got going on for our Romesco. So I've just created a bed uh, of our Romesco, and I'm, then I'm going to take our roasted vegetables, and we'll just kind of spread it around on top. Nice. Well, now, would you do the same thing, the bed for meat? Let's say it was a nice piece of steak or something. 100%. So off the, uh, uh, off the grill, out of the oven, we've got uh, uh, this romesco goes really well. The, even with a nice piece of like simply cooked fish, I think it works really well because the romesco has a lot of flavor. It gives definitely some smokiness. Here, I want you to try it. I will taste it. The... the um and also, my question is, if you made it in advance, you made it right out, roasted veggies, and you blended it, what's the temperature the dips and the sauces are supposed to be at? So, romesco is great. You can have it warm, but it's actually better just to have it at room temperature. That's phenomenal. <laughs> yeah, you get a lot. There's a lot going on there's in this, in this sauce. So, it's really nutty. It's really smoky. It's got uh, um, uh, those vegetables, so it's kind of fresh. But uh, uh, Amazing. Yeah. So, 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 we're 20 minutes in. We've done the roasted veggies, which was amazing. Now we've the, the, yeah, the sauce and the dip. I love. Oh, you're adding a little yeah, more. Yeah, can, you can turn this into a salad as well. You can have it as a warm side dish. You can turn it into a salad. Uh, uh, you can throw some greens, some arugula. I've got this beautiful frise. So, we'll just kind of like put it around like that. Really simple. Just to brighten it up. Awesome. Which is what we want to do. <laughs> so, so that's it. We're trying to give you some inspiration for different things that you'll find. You won't find them all the time. It's really now across Canada that uh, some locally grown vegetables are in season. So, you know, different ways to explore it, both the roasted and then with a the sauce. But now let's talk about things that are going to get a little more popular as it gets colder, which is soups. Yeah, for sure. So, I want to get going on our soup here. The, uh, the soup is actually, again, very, very simple to do. And we're going to start off the, the, uh, the soup the same, thing, the same way that we did with our uh, roasted vegetables here. I want to get a leek, just trimmed. And I, I cut off the dark green part of the, of the leek, and, and you're going to reserve that for some, for some stock which we'll talk about in a little bit. So I've got some, uh, some, some of our uh, chopped leek right here, and I've got some uh, uh, cauliflower just cut up into, into florets, like so. Does that make a difference? Do you cut different sizes, or are you trying to hit a different size when you're cutting cauliflower to roast? That's a great question. In, in, for when you're roasting vegetables, just in general, you should try, do your best to make everything uniform, relatively the same size. Okay. Uh, that just will promote even cooking uh, throughout. Okay, so uh, again, leeks. We or if you don't have leeks, you can use some onions. Right. Works uh, perfectly fine. Uh, I've, again, another clove of garlic here, and I don't really have to worry about uh, cutting it too fine because this is all going to get pureed up anyway. So uh, uh, don't waste your time. Just you want to get this done as quick as possible. So we're going to throw a clove of garlic in there, and and I feel like a broken record, but we're going to douse this with some extra virgin olive oil. So like when you're doing, you can do a soup from raw to, but when you're, I guess it just adds what, a complexity of flavor when they're roasted? Oh, for sure, for sure. Especially in this type of weather, it's so much more warming, you right. know? Um, it, uh, it, it, adds, it adds a little bit of depth. It adds a little bit of like heaviness to the soup, I find. Okay. So uh, at, roasting it just adds a whole nother level of flavor. Absolutely, uh, if you want to do it uh, uh, without roasting, just throw it in a pot. Or eat, as a matter of fact, you can just throw it into the blender. Right. Um, everything raw in the blender and turn it on, because the, the cool thing about, about the blender is that it has a soup function, and you can make soup from raw vegetables in it, because the, the, it's from the friction, right? That's yeah, gonna, uh, just generates enough heat. To yeah, exactly. Soup. So I've got, again, my leeks, my cauliflower, and a cl fat clove of garlic. We're going to throw that onto our roasting pan. And for, for this, when it comes to roasting uh, in the oven, I am not big on crowding the pan too much. You want to have everything in relatively you know, one layer, because if you crowd it too much, what'll happen is it'll start to steam and you're not going to get a lot of color off of it. So okay. one in the, uh, in the oven quickly, again, we've been roasting a lot, but one of the things we most pride ourselves at Breville is heat control. And in our smart ovens, all of them, we have different quartz elements that are going on depending on what you're doing. If you're roasting, if you're broiling, it's high heat at the top. And the different rack positions you see in this oven suggest you where to put the pan based on if you're baking or you're roasting or yeah. you're roasting. So I was roasting some, uh, so I'm going to throw my cauliflower in there and I have it set 
uh, at 450 degrees on roast, and uh, we're gonna use the super convection. Tell me about super convection, Brian. So super convection is that the convection people know what it is. Super convection is really the fans that's really distributing this heat uh, at a high frequency and just moving that heat around. So that's what allows us to do, well, faster roasting like that, but also air frying. And on our uh, smart oven air, it actually allows us to dehydrate. Why don't so you turn, the, turn it around so that they oh, can yeah. see the functions. So I love, the, I, I love that this small little oven can fit so much stuff in it, and it cooks just as good, if not better, than my regular oven. What people are surprised by is, first of all, because it's small, it's a lot more efficient, energy efficient, it heats up faster. So for a lot of you know, weekday cooking, it, it's, it, it does the trick. So yeah. people think of it as a second oven, but quickly they, they sometimes replace the main <laughs> ovens. All right, so let's, uh, let's get going on the, uh, 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 on the soup. So after about 20, 25 minutes, what we have is our, is our cauliflower here. We've, we've, uh, um, we've roasted it and, uh, for about 20, like I said, 25 minutes, but really uh, what I want you to look for is a little bit of color. So you can see a little bit of caramelization around the edges. We, our leeks are nicely golden. Uh, this is perfect. I'm not overly concerned if the, if the cauliflower is completely done or not. To be honest though, after 20, 25 minutes in the oven, especially at that temperature, they're done. So what we are going to do is dump our cauliflower mixture into our, the bowl of our blender here. You notice when Jonathan does it, he likes to, he have the, you have the wheel that you can control, you know, everything all the way from puree all the way to mill. Uh, and sometimes that's the great control you can use. And sometimes depending on what you're doing, you might use one of the, the, pr the preset functions. Uh, but that's, he gives you that versatility. All right. Now, when it comes to uh, uh, making soup, you know, we've got our vegetables, we've got our flavor base in there. Uh, we need some form of liquid. So uh, I, I never thought in my career I would get to the point where uh, I would be using a, uh, uh, a slow cooker. And when Brian suggested me using, uh, this was a couple years ago, uh, using a, a pressure cooker uh, uh, or a slow cooker, I was like, ah, I don't do that sort of stuff. But I have found that every time that I use, uh, that I make some stock, I'm using my pressure cooker now. So even to back up there, John, I always ask Jonathan, what are restaurants doing to get that soup that much better than what I'm doing at home? And you said it's the stock. For sure it's the stock. I think making homemade stock is one of the greatest things in the, in the kitchen. The, uh, it, it is, the good stock is like the lifeblood of, of, of cooking and it goes in pretty much everything. So, I mean, normally you could do it on a pot on the stove. Jonathan's talking about our Fast Slow Pro. This is a pressure cooker, slow cooker in one, different functions. And one of the things it does is it does soups and stocks extremely well. So, when you're doing it on the stove, which you can do a great job on, how long would you let that slowly So, boil? on the stove, typically I'll use, uh, uh, you know, the carcasses of a couple chickens. Right. Fill it with cold water. And I'm in, I, I don't really put a lot of vegetables in my stock because I want to have more of a pure chicken flavor. So, uh, but the minimum time for me of, of simmering a, a chicken stock would be three hours. Three, and then so anywhere between three and four hours and you're done. You don't need to go over four, but we're getting into technical details now, which, uh, but in the pressure but, cooker, but in the pressure cooker, one hour, one hour. And then it's done. One hour and it's perfect. And you're not watch, You're not worried about watching the boil. Or Correct. So the... if I'm, you, when I'm in a pinch, uh, uh, one hour in the pressure cooker is perfect. Alternately, uh, uh, you know what's even better than pressure cooker chicken stock? Slow cooker uh, chicken stock. You have more time. So you put it on before you go to bed on low for like eight or ten hours. Okay. And by the time you wake up, you, your whole house smells like chicken soup. <laughs> and uh, you have this beautiful crystal clear, super rich chicken stock. That's one lesson I've internalized from Jonathan is making homemade stock. You build into your routine. You're doing a roast chicken or whatever you're doing on the weekend. You take the time with the carcass or you can buy raw bones. It's usually not front and center, but you can ask your butcher and make, get in the habit of making your, how often do you make stock, Jonathan? I make stock uh, every other day. <laughs> <laughs> That's why the pressure cooker really comes If you were really a normal person, how often would you make stock? <laughs> okay, well, if you're a normal person, I mean, it depends on how much uh, stock you use, but right. um, if you make a, a, a big pot, it freezes really well, Okay. and uh, you just bag it up and freeze it when it's cool, and then uh, uh, you just take it out whenever you need it, so I don't know. I, I'd like to think that in the winter, 
You're making stock once a week. Okay, okay. Fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. All right, so we've got our, our, our beautiful chicken stock in here. I've got my cauliflower, leeks, and garlic. And all I want to do is simply uh, uh, blend this and puree it together. I'm going to do this at a relatively high speed because I want to get it really nice and smooth, okay? And this thing does it so quickly that within less than 30 seconds, you're pretty much done. Now this was uh, obviously hot things we just roasted and the stock was hot. If you're doing a cold to hot soup, which sometimes you do, you want to just quickly put stuff in, there is a, a cold to hot soup function, which is about seven minutes or so. And it really, you get cold ingredients and it, what comes out is a piping hot. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I was trying that out yesterday and, it, and, and, and I didn't even do it that long. I did it four minutes okay. and it was, it was okay. getting hot awesome. already. Um, now, the great thing about eyeballing a soup like this is that you can adjust it to the, to the texture that you want. If you like, want it to be a little bit thicker, okay. make it a little bit thicker. If you want it a little bit thinner, put in a little bit more stock. The first thing I want to do though is definitely add in some seasoning, so some salt and some pepper. So that didn't go in before, that's coming in after. It, that's correct. So when I make chicken stock, or any stock for that matter, um, I like to keep it neutral, so no seasoning at all. And you salt the finished product. Correct. So I think this is a little thick, so I'm going to add in maybe half a cup more chicken stock. And we'll just bring that together really quickly. And we are done. I'm gonna give it a quick little taste here. So it's really important that we put in enough salt. I, Cause we gotta save time for dessert. We gotta save time <laughs> for dessert. How is it? Delicious. So right from, right from here, especially if you do it on the cold to hot, you blend it up for a little bit longer, it's gonna get warmer and warmer yeah. and warmer. What we're just simply gonna do, pour our soup into a bowl, just like so. So everyone, I know it's hard to believe, it's getting colder, it's gonna get even colder, it's the fall, so warm soups, uh, especially with the bounty of stuff that you find in farmer's markets or regular grocery stores, stuff from near, wherever you are, there's so much available and soups are a great way to, uh, to enjoy it in the, the harvest season. Now, as you can see, that soup is, is, is beautiful on its own, guys. So we've got this beautiful white ca roasted cauliflower soup, but I want the, fl I want the colors to really pop. Okay. And in order to do that, uh, we're gonna put a little bit of a garnish on top. So I've got these, these really nice uh, um, peas that I preserved from the spring. Okay. So these are fresh uh, uh, green, uh, shucked green peas. So I'm gonna get a little bit of green peas there. I'm gonna start off uh, by slicing a little bit of green onion, because that's what I have. Whether you put it in or not is uh, no big deal, but I, what I wanna do is create maybe a little bit of a salad to go on top, because I want something to bite into. Our period soup is one note texturally, okay. so I want to I want to you know uh, boost it up a little bit, and some fresh mint. Fresh mint goes well with so many things. It just brightens up, especially roasted vegetables. Fresh green herbs, terrific to to just brighten and lighten everything and up. And mints is a weed, easiest thing to grow <laughs> in your backyard. That's right. <laughs> and I've got a little bit of lemon here, so I'm a uh, I think what I'm going to do. We're going to just zest the lemon a little bit over. So we've got the recipe and we're sharing with everyone, which is great, but if you were just ad-libbing, you're looking for, like you said, some, some fresh herbs and a bit of different texture, like you said, you had green onions. Absolutely. And, and is lemon always in there though, pretty much? A lemon is a really great um, counter to something that's, that's, that's roasted and heavy and rich. Okay. And lemon just kind of cuts through it and makes it uh, uh, um, just way more balanced. And balance is a, is a big thing. So we've got our greens and our lemon. Nice little salad. It doesn't have to be hot. It can be just at room temperature. And then what we'll do is we'll just spoon a little bit of that on top. Beautiful. Now, not only does this brighten up the soup color-wise, but also flavor-wise, uh, uh, it just goes really well. Now you can see, once we put that on, everything just pops. I'm gonna finish it off with a little bit of olive oil, and there we go. We've got a nice, beautiful, All right. great cauliflower soup. So we are now, we are now into the dessert. I can't believe we're getting all this in, amazing. 
<laughs> Are we, we're on schedule? We're on a schedule, little behind, right? but that's okay. Right? okay. Well, Everybody's uh, uh, keen for dessert. All so. right, let's do it. Let's do it. So I think uh, for this, I'm going to use the, the food processor. Um, we really wanted to do a, do a dessert and to show that you can cook it in, in such a tiny little oven, which is actually not as tiny as, a, as, a, as right. you think, right? So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a, a, a tart dough or a sweet tart dough. So this is the, the, our sous chef peel and dice. Uh, so this is a food processor, but it also it, it, it peels, uh, it dices, and if you have the dicing attachment, you can do it at, at 8 millimeters, at 12, at 16. Uh, so it's a really a versatile item. I think you use it almost every class for something or other. And you're going to use it now to make a dough, right? Uh, we're going to use it right now to make a dough. Uh, very, very simple. What we're going to do is take uh, a little bit of flour here, and the recipe is going to uh, be shared a little bit later. But this is about a one and a quarter cup of all-purpose flour. I'm going to take about a quarter cup of sugar. We're going to take uh, um, the. Uh, we're going to take a little bit of egg. So I just want to use the yolk for this. So we're just going to use one large egg, the yolk of one large egg. Tell me honestly, and I, I know I'm not going to like the nerd, but what's the big, <laughs> versus buying something, because a lot of people will buy their, their pie crust. So when you make it yourself, what, what, what's, I mean, especially if you're doing it properly like you are, but what's the taste difference that you're getting? Oh, well, the taste difference is, is huge. First of all, we are uh, putting real butter in it. Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> which, is, uh, which is a really big thing. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, take about half a cup of butter in here. Okay, so a moderate amount. <laughs> Well, it's a dessert. I mean, come on. So we're going to take about half a cup of butter. Really simply just, we're going to uh, 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 bl uh, dice it up. And then w a lot of times people have, have many issues with, with uh, 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 making doughs because like, especially when you're working with butter, it's, it's really kind of, it's really kind of tricky butter doughs. But a sweet tart dough is probably the simplest thing that you can make. Oh, good. Yeah, we're going to add it into uh, our food processor, and I'm going to turn it on. Now, all we need to do is keep this on until it starts to clump together. OK. OK. And that butter was cold right out of the fridge. Is that important? Uh, room temperature is, is perfectly fine. In fact, it'll probably clump up a little bit faster. OK. Uh, um, but you can see now it's starting to get a little bit sandy which is exactly what we're looking for. And uh, uh, so you can see it's starting to clump together. See how it's starting to go? I'm going to take this off, maybe. Oh, you know what, let's do it. Okay. Great. Now, OK, it's, it's OK. What we're going to do, really simply, is take a tart shell, OK? and. How do you know, how do you know to stop? Because it's now because now it's starting to, as you can see, in here, it's starting to clump together and be like a real dough. Okay. Okay. So if anything, what you can do is get your hand in there, and it, and if you can press it together, and it comes together like that, that's exactly what you want. Okay. So this this is very similar to like a a, a shortbread. So you're going to go for that kind of texture. So that's how easy it is, guys. And all you have to do is dump it into. Your tart shell pan. So what the ingredients was flour and butter, is, and that was it. Flour, butter, egg, and uh, and some sugar. Egg yolk and sugar. Yeah. Wow. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take your dough, and start pressing it into the edges, just like so. Like making a perimeter. Correct. So whenever the great thing about this dough is that you don't have to roll it out. You can actually just press it into the pan, which makes it so much easier. So this is the type of dough that you're going to be using for um, tart pans or fluted tart pans like this. So like your lemon tarts, like really simple fruit tarts. Uh, so we're just going to press it all the way around and fill up the edges and, and just use it all up. And it, even if it is very, very thin, it's still going to bake really, really well. So we're not going to waste our time. Uh, uh, pressing it in right now, but it's really very, very easy. Now, what I would recommend doing um, uh, is once you've pressed it into the dough or into the into the tart pan, freeze it for about or put it, pop it in the freezer 20, 30 minutes, and then you're going to blind bake it. So, if you've never blind baked before, it's really quite simple. 
you end up with a tart shell, just so, something like this. Uh, say we pressed it in, and then we're going to get some parchment paper or tin foil. You're just going to lay it inside like so. And then you're going to get some pie weights and just weigh it down. Pie you, weights? What's a pie so weight? So dried beans. Sometimes you have little metal bearings, like metal uh, ball bearings that you can just weigh down. And your... the purpose is just pushing down the parchment Correct. paper. Correct. Because okay. if I were to pop that in raw uh, without the weights, it would lift it'll up. just puff up. Okay. So, oh, got it. So what that does is it keeps it in that pie or tart shape. So you're going to bake that uh, in, with the pie weights for about 15 minutes in the in the smart oven, 350, 375 degrees, and then uh, uh, what you're going to do simply is take um, my, I'm going to reuse this. So we're going to now make the filling. So it's funny, when we talked about orchard desserts, Jonathan and I had a lot of fun thinking of the menu, a seasonal menu. You know, John's like, don't make me do anything with apples and pears. <laughs> <laughs> is that what I said? <laughs> So, of course, you know, uh, people coming back with boatloads too many apples from apple picking, but, but you can absolutely do it with, with apples. So, but plums. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to be using these beautiful golden plums today uh, to make our tart. But the first thing we actually need to do is make our frangipan filling. Ah. Okay, so if you are unaware of what frangipan filling is, it's an it's a almond, kind of like an almond custard that's super delicious and rich, and I think it's perfect for fall. But it, again, just like with the roasted vegetables, it's kind of like a... Uh, a blank canvas. You can put any kind of fruit you want. Tonight we're going to be using the plums, but use your apples, use your pears, use any kind of uh, berries you want. Just scatter them on top and it's going to be perfect. So um, again, we're going to pull out the, the uh, food processor and we're just going to start dumping in uh, some ground almonds that I have here. Alternately, what you can do is use... Um, you can use uh, whole blanched almonds, about one cup. Okay? Along with it, another half cup of butter we've got in here. Uh, I'm going to add in uh, uh, a little bit of sugar here. Uh, I like to put in a touch of cornstarch just to help everything come, bind together. And then I want to crack in three whole eggs. And so while we uh, blend this up, it's only going to take a, a, a few seconds to blend it up and come together for it to come together. Uh, it's going to end up to be this really sweet almondy paste, uh, which is perfect for our well, guys dessert. we're a little over time but that's fine i think we can all hold on for dessert but this is the last this is the pièce de résistance and that's it so our frangipan filling is all done as you can see we've got this beautiful paste here that what you want to do simply is pop it into the tart shell spread it around just like so. Empty the whole thing out, spread it around, and then all we want to do is just take some of our plums here, and we're just going to keep them in, we're just going to uh, uh, have them. So plums, local plums in Canada are seasonal right now, right? Correct, <laughs> correct. And actually, you can get those Damson plums. <laughs> Yes, yes. Uh, 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 <laughs> they grow them in Ontario. So it's actually, uh, you, can, you can match the, match the whole thing. <laughs> so I'm just going to use a couple of plums here in half. Plop them in like that. This whole thing is going to go into the oven. 375 degrees is going to take about a half an hour to 40 minutes. And so we'll pop that in the oven really simply. And then by the time you're done, you end up with this beautiful tart. So I added some flaked almonds on top just to give it a little bit of uh, color and texture. Oh my God, that's uh, beautiful. And How long was that? that so was that's baking? about, once the filling goes in and the plums go in, I'm going to say it takes about uh, 30 to 40 minutes. And, uh, uh, and that's, that's beautiful. Look at that. Almost good enough to eat. That is amazing. <laughs> I cannot believe that we somehow got through uh, all four of these things. We did roasted veggies to start. We did the sauce. Uh, we did a soup, and then we ended up with this beautiful dessert. Listen, guys, uh, we're a little over, but we're on time. Amazing that we got through all that. I <laughs> want to thank uh, Jonathan. Uh, amazing job. Thank you for sharing that. I think we got a lot of wisdom. What we hope, guys, with you, we know it was quick, 40 minutes and change, but we hope we showed and taught, but really inspired you to, you know, try uh, some things that you're finding that won't be here very long in Canada. It's our harvest season. Yeah. So, I'm going to dig in here. <laughs> Uh, and again, I want to remind you guys of Damson Blue. So uh, this was celebrating 
the launch of, of Dams in Blue appliances at the Bay. I believe they're actually on sale now, a number of them. And you can check out, there's a whole range of colors, including uh, black truffle, there's sea salt, so it's a real neat color range to check. Now, we don't really have time for too many questions, but I think there was one that we wanted to put to the chef, and it was a good one. So this question came uh, from one of the viewers. They asked, is there a different cook time from the toaster air fryer oven versus the wall oven? Oh, versus a conventional oven in the right. wall. Uh, no, actually, it, it, it cooks in, pr in it, this is just a mini version of the big oven. It does it in the same amount of time. It hits the same temperature. It's just that like, sometimes you don't want to heat up your whole oven for right. you know, just that small little thing. And we baked our tart in this oven. So you can bake a cake in there. You can bake cookies in there. You can roast a chicken in there. Right, yeah, I have roasted <laughs> a chicken. So I'll also say that all these come with recipes and we're developing them more and more recipes that are specific to the smart ovens so that you can, yeah, you'll have the exact settings and, and, uh, and temperatures for different recipes. But as Jonathan said, your favorite recipe from the wall oven, you can do it in, in there. So listen, guys, we could go on all night. Uh, Jonathan's ready to eat. Uh, I think we'll, <laughs> we'll cut it there. Again, I want to thank uh, Hudson's, Hudson's Bay uh, for giving us the, the platform to do this. And to everybody out mm -hmm. there, listen, uh, it's a strange time we know. Stay safe. Keep cooking. And uh, don't forget to support local, including all the great farmers that have uh, amazing harvests right now. So with that note, guys, I want to say uh, good night. Thanks very much.